Hello, my name is Nigel Thorne. I'm from Wales and I have concerns about the influence of queer theory on Welsh government policies relating to young people struggling with gender distress. On the Sexualities and Gender Research page on the Cardiff University website, it states, It has traditionally been said that while sex is biological, one is male or female, gender is social and cultural. This is what was taught to parents. Those who are critical of socially expected gender roles and behaviours are said to have a gender-critical viewpoint. The paragraph continues. But recent theorists following Judith Butler, and including some of our members, see biological sex and gender as inextricably mixed, and both, in some senses at least, culturally constructed and performative. Judith Butler believes that to undermine heteronormativity it is necessary to disseminate teaching that downplays the significance of biological sex and elevates the significance of a personal gender, a gender identity. That gender is based on social stereotypes. As Victor Madrigal Borlos, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Gender Identity and Sexual Orientation, states... Gender is not something that is inherent to persons. There is no evidence to that effect. Gender is, in fact, the relationship between the person's free will and the series of stereotypes that assign behaviors or patterns or roles to a particular given sex or to the understanding of sex in a given society. Those who subscribe to this viewpoint have a queer theory perspective. Queer theory reifies gender stereotypes. It is this belief that has informed the development of the RSE Code and Guidance and LGBTQ Plus Action Plan for Wales. Stonewall Cymru created the scoping document for the Action Plan and were highly influential in its creation. The original version of the plan was published in July 2021. Stonewall published an article about it on their website. Over the past year, individuals and representatives from LGBTQ plus organisations such as Pride Camry, Glitter Camry and Stonewall Camry have been listening to the experiences of LGBTQ plus people from across Wales to further understand the challenges, discrimination and inequalities that still exist and what should be included in the plan in order to best progress LGBTQ plus equality and our rights. These experiences were fed into an independent expert panel report which informed the government's LGBTQ plus action plan. Davinia Louise Green, director of Stonewall Cymru, said of the plan, This Pride season alone has shown how we can't become complacent in the journey to full LGBTQ plus equality. Since devolution, we have seen some key milestones for advancing LGBTQ plus equality. From the launch of the Welsh Gender Service to ensuring that the new curriculum is LGBTQ plus inclusive. However, as our research and the recent news headlines sadly show, we still have a long way to go until everyone can be free to be who they are. In September 2021, Bev Jackson from LGB Alliance had a piece published on the Merched Cymru website. The publication of the LGBTQ plus action plan for Wales does nothing to improve the climate for LGB people. In Wales, as in other parts of the UK, LGBTQ plus is an abbreviation used to impose gender identity dogma. What is wrong with the plan? The plan focuses on gender, mentioning it 23 times, not counting references to transgender. It also refers to the notion of non-binary 10 times. There is no reference to biological sex at all. On the 17th of June 2021, 16 academics urged Cardiff University to consider withdrawal from Stonewall Diversity Champion Scheme. The letter stated, Dear Vice-Chancellor, we are writing to suggest that Cardiff University's membership of the Stonewall Diversity Champion Scheme should be reviewed. We support the rights of transgender staff and students, yet being associated with Stonewall lies in tension with two of the university's core values. One, academic freedom, and two, respect for the rights of all staff and students, including women. Nancy Kelly, Chief Executive Officer of Stonewall, has likened gender-critical beliefs to anti-Semitism. 
The core tenets of these beliefs are that sex is real and matters. The motivation for this comparison is to justify Stonewall's long-standing policy demanding no debate on transgender issues. Stonewall's demands have wide-ranging implications across academic disciplines, and the conflict with academic freedom is fundamental. Stonewall is a lobby group which aims to achieve policy change, and it is entitled to campaign towards this end. But it is inappropriate that such a group should be embedded within the university, influencing policies which affect freedom of expression and expose dissenters to harassment. Nine of those 16 academics were from the School of Social Sciences, the same school as Professor E.J. Reynolds. A response to the letter was signed by scores of students, staff and alumni. The response stated, We, the undersigned Cardiff University students, staff and alumni, wish to register our opposition to the open letter, published on the 17th of June by a number of lecturers, demanding the university cut ties with Stonewall over the charity's firm support of trans rights. At a time when trans and non-binary people are subject to near-constant inflammatory media attention, when access to life-saving health care for trans people has been continually eroded, with LGBTQ plus hate crimes on the rise and with trans and non-binary people disproportionately likely to experience poverty, unemployment and homelessness, we believe it is more important than ever for Cardiff University to defend the rights of its queer, trans and non-binary students and staff and to ensure trans and non-binary people feel welcome in all its spaces. Professor Reynolds was one of the early signatories. In addition to the counter-petition, a leaflet was distributed on campus picturing a woman holding a gun, the names and photos of the signatories and the caption, Act Now! A student whistleblower then revealed violent threats being made on the Facebook page of the Cardiff LGBT Plus Society, including a threat to weaken a signatory's knees manually with a piece of 2 by 4 Another signatory had their car windscreen smashed. On the 22nd of February 2022, Toby Young from the Free Speech Union wrote to Jeremy Miles, Dear Mr Miles, I am writing to you in my capacity as General Secretary of the Free Speech Union. The Free Speech Union is a non-partisan mass membership public interest body that stands up for the speech rights of its members and campaigns for free speech more widely. This letter concerns a campaign of violent threats and harassment against several of our members and their colleagues, who are all academics at Cardiff University. This has included suggestions from students that they be kneecapped. The distribution of a leaflet on campus with the names and photos of these academics, with the act caption Act Now, and an image of a woman holding a gun, and a public call to destroy the turf menace. Both the university and the police have failed to respond robustly to this orchestrated and prolonged campaign. No action was taken against any student or member of the public. In February 2023, Deputy Minister for Social Partnership Hannah Blythin announced the launch of the final version of the Welsh Government LGBTQ Plus Action Plan. Little had changed from the initial version. Stonewall were referenced 23 times. I thank the Chevnith. Item three is next, and it's a statement by the Deputy Minister for Social Partnership on the LGBTQ plus action plan. And I call on the Deputy Minister, Hannah Bly, then. LGBT History Month offers an opportunity to reflect on how far we've come in the struggle for LGBTQ plus rights and celebrate the lives of LGBTQ plus people for, for who too long and too often have been hidden from history. We don't just need to reflect on our past, we need to learn lessons from it. We will not forget the harm that discrimination, hate and exclusion have caused to so many LGBTQ plus people. Nor will we forget the progress and achievements we made over the past 40 years, thanks to the activists and allies that paved the way. But we cannot be complacent, and LGBTQ plus people can still face discrimination and harassment. We're in an age when it can feel like we're under attack and our rights are at risk of being rolled back, with LGBTQ plus communities routinely weaponised in the name of so-called political and media debate. We remain absolute that the Welsh Government stands together with and within our LGBTQ plus communities in Wales. 
We want to create a Wales where everyone feels free, supported and safe to be and live their lives as their authentic selves. We recommit ourselves to supporting trans and non-binary people and our starting point is that trans men are men, trans women are women and non-binary identities are valid. Yeah. Work has also begun on developing guidance for local authorities and schools to support transgender children and young people so that it can be confident and comfortable in supporting trans students in all aspects of school life. Deputy Chloe, I must acknowledge the support of so many in the making of this plan. I want particularly to put on record my thanks to the LGBTQ plus expert panel who provided help, advice and challenge that allowed us to focus on what we could do to make a difference to people's lives. I'd also like to thank the top team within the Welsh Government whose hard work is behind me being able to stand here and launch this plan today. Indeed, it is a plan that reaches across government and I'm grateful for the steadfast cross-government support of my ministerial colleagues. This ongoing collective support will be vital in turning the plan from words on a page into practical actions that make a real difference. And together in pride, making Wales the most LGBTQ plus friendly nation in Europe. In a Children, Young People and Education Committee meeting in May 2022, Jeremy Miles stated. Schools are you know, keen to have clear and uh, robust guidance uh, and training as well, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, to support uh, trans children and young people. It's obviously a very complex piece of work um, and it uh, raises a number of issues that need to be addressed uh, sensitively as part of that uh, whole school approach in order for it to be uh, effective. But it is definitely, obviously, a gap that needs to be uh, addressed as soon as possible. And, you know, I would be disappointed, I think, if we hadn't uh, you know, if it wasn't substantially complete by the end of this year. Uh, Stonewall Cymru were asked by the Welsh Government to provide the scoping document for the LGBTQ plus action plan. Stonewall Cymru already provide transitioning guidance for teachers and educational professionals. The guidance doesn't mention gender dysphoria, but it frequently mentions trans children. The guidance tells teachers what should I do if I think of people as trans? You might think of people as trans, but until they tell you how they feel, you can't know. Might this just be a phase? If you are seriously concerned, remember that the decisions your pupil makes to support their transition under the age of 16 are not irreversible. Young people can take hormone blockers to allow them the time to consider their feelings without having to go through puberty. If they then decide they do not want to transition, they will simply be able to stop taking the blockers and puberty will start as usual. Similarly, if they decide to change their name with the support of their parents, it is possible and relatively straightforward to change your name again. Bear in mind, however, that it is relatively unusual for trans young people to change their mind. To undermine how they are feeling is likely to do more harm. What if their parents aren't supportive? Some parents find it difficult or upsetting when they find out that the child is trans, but most parents simply want their child to be happy. If parents are finding it difficult to accept their child as being trans, remember that at the end of the day, your duty is to protect the best interests of your pupil and that if things are difficult at home it is even more important that they feel supported in school. Be clear about what you do and don't need parents approval for. For example teachers wouldn't normally seek parental approval to call a child by a nickname so it shouldn't be necessary to get approval to use their preferred name in the classroom. Further support the guidance directs teachers to mermaids, currently under investigation by the Charity Commission, for, among other things, sending breast binders to young girls without their parents' knowledge. Gendered Intelligence, whose CEO, Jay Stewart, admits that queer theory was the roadmap to his self-understanding. Gyres, whose chair of trustees, Cat Burden, believes that your chromosomes have nothing to do 
with your biological sex. What we must avoid is the simple fact that the protests against us being female or male are using year 11 science to try and justify their arguments. They are quite literally saying chromosomes are king. If you're XX, you're female. If you're XY, you're male. And that's utter rubbish. The guidance also directs teachers to Youth Cymru's Transform project, complete with gender unicorn and partially funded by the Welsh Government. I was born female and... No, that's, that's not me at all. Um, transgender is when you don't identify with the sex you were assigned at birth. Trans for me means being, uh, being authentic, being my true self and uh, yeah, just expressing myself and not being ashamed of it. I just didn't agree with what everyone else thought I was. Yeah, I mean, I always knew I wanted to be a boy from about the age of three when you kind of knew the difference between boys and girls. Yeah, it wasn't until about the age of 14, 15 that I heard the word transgender from an online friend. They came out as transgender and I was like, well, what is that? And they explained it and I was like, that's exactly what I am. And, you know, I did research into it and it's a relief when you find out because you then think, OK, I'm not, you know, messed up. I'm not weird. There's, you know, choices and things for me to be able to do to make my life better. In some ways we are moving to a point where people are starting to consider other genders but still things seem to be really pink and blue or really binary, really male and female um, and going outside of that is considered abnorm abnormal um, when it shouldn't be really. I've also been told that you take gender too literally. You sort of say, back when I was younger no one cared. It's like, yeah they did. Of course they did, they just didn't speak out about it because they were scared, because there was discrimination that was like much worse than it is now. It's important to know that there aren't like just standard male to female, there's a lot more to explore. Because gender isn't about opposite, it's more of a, a sort of scale, that's why sort of non-binary and agender, etc. Or people who identify more with female or more with male but they're not necessarily agender. You know, it's sort of a, more of a spectrum, I think. And it can change. If, if you tell someone, oh, I'm non-binary, and they go, what does that mean? Does that mean you don't have, like, uh, any genitals? It's like, no, it's, it's sort of like a really weird concept people have. Try everything. Like, I tried a lot of different things, and if they don't work for you, that's fine. Whatever makes you happy, really. In October 2021, Bev Jackson, Stephanie Davis Arai and others took part in a webinar titled Language and Erasure in the Action Plan. I'm going to talk a bit about the language we've heard so much about in, in just the previous week. Um, and the key language in the 
trans activist campaign, of course, is trans women are women. It's the mantra of the movement. And um, this is no accident. It's the state on this statement rests the key political aim of the movement, which is the replacement of sex with gender identity as the distinction between men and women in law and public policy. And this enables any man to access women only spaces by the simple means of saying, I'm a woman. And just this week, of course, Keir Starmer said that a factually and scientifically correct statement, only women have a cervix, shouldn't be said, it's not right. And the reason that he said that um, was because it, this statement states the biological distinction between men and women, and that's not allowed because it suggests, of course, that trans women are not women. And to enforce this belief on everyone that trans women are women, and therefore entitled to use women-only facilities and services, is a strategy characterised by the bullying and silencing of anyone who disagrees with it. A political goal of adult activists should not be the basis for the education of children. Um, of course, to believe that sex is immutable and cannot be changed is a protected belief under the Equality Act 2010. And the Education Act 1996 pro prohibits the political indoctrination of children in schools. The gender ideology enshrined in the Wales LGBTQ plus action plan, if taught in schools as fact, would be in breach of that act by indoctrinating children into a belief in a highly controversial political ideology. The substitution of gender identity for sex as the distinction between men and women takes away the rights and protections of girls as the female sex. Gender identity is not a protective characteristic under the Equality Act 2010, of course, sex is. The Welsh Government commits to delivering LGBTQ plus inclusive RSE for all and providing statutory national trans guidance for schools and local authorities. Based on the action plan, this means teaching children that they have a gender identity and that this, is, this inner feeling uh, determines whether they are a boy or a girl, not their biological sex. And this is, along with being scientifically incorrect information, um, which adolescents are bombarded with online, on social media platforms such as Tumblr, TikTok and YouTube, it coincides with the unprecedented rise in the number of adolescents being referred to the Tavistock Gender Identity Development Service, JIDS, or Sandyford Clinic in Glasgow, over the past decade, and around 75% of whom are teenage girls. And these girls are arriving at the Tavistock Clinic already convinced that they are really literally boys, and a medical pathway is all that awaits them, as Sinead has told us, medical intervention with serious and irreversible lifelong consequences. The case of Pira Bell, who re regretted her transition, we know is the tip of the iceberg. The unscientific concept of gender identity is an especially harmful way for children and adolescents to conceptualise their discomfort with their bodies or their feelings of not fitting in. Teaching children to understand themselves as gender identities rather than sexes Teaching them effectively the denial of reality is a serious and harmful social experiment on this generation. But of course, teaching this ideology in schools is not for the benefit of children. Activists targeting of children with the message they may have been born in the wrong body, teaching them that gender identity overrides biological sex, destabilizes children's perception of reality. Teaching children that transgender people must not suffer discrimination is admirable, and we, we, we would all agree with that. But teaching children gender ideology results in a school environment of deception, secrecy, violation of boundaries without consent, and separation of children from parents. And ultimately, it serves only a political agenda to introduce a system of self-ID in schools and to indoctrinate this generation of children into the belief trans women are women. Bev Jackson, founder and member of the LGB Alliance, has some advice. This belief that everyone has a gender identity. I mean, I don't have a gender identity. I do have rights. I think most of us don't have a gender identity. and We do have rights. But those rights are being completely um, erased by, by the Gender Identity Brigade. 
And these people um, who, who, who wrote and approved this report are the people who believe that everyone has gender identity and moreover, that's more important than their biological sex. This is causing not only confusion, as, as uh, you know, uh, Stephanie in particular points out so eloquently to, to a whole generation of children, but it's, it's causing actual physical harm, harm that will, that, that will last decades. But we do have to be angry because there is a lot to be angry about. So use your anger, is I would say to everybody, around, let's channel it. Channel it, find ways of using it to object, to protest, to say we are not going to have this. We insist on having definitions. When you say gender, what do you mean? When you say a trans woman, what do you mean? Excuse me, what do you mean by transphobia? Challenge people. Don't allow people to get away with using words without explaining what they're talking about. But don't be too angry all the time because it doesn't work. So, and if you haven't spoken out yet, please do, not just to your friends, but write in to, write in to, to your local schools, write to your uh, MP, do something. If you haven't yet spoken out yet, we know the majority of people agree with us. We know that the majority of people know that a lesbian is an adult human female who is attracted to other adult human females. That's what most people believe, but they think, yeah, well, you know, I don't want to get involved in that. I think it's time for people who know this to get involved. Everybody listening here, please do something, if, if only to try and persuade the people around you that something really bad is happening to our language and it is having a terrible effect on our young people, especially on young girls. I mean, if you see 40,000 young girls and, and women uh, raising money on GoFundMe to, to have their breasts removed, then you know something has gone deeply wrong deeply wrong with our society and it's affecting girls more than anyone else so speak out please let's speak out and, and not be afraid we don't need to be afraid anymore the tide is turning and uh, uh, don't be afraid we are moving forward and i think we're going to be um, winning very soon thank you those parents who believe that their child doesn't need to be medicalized in order to express their authentic self may wish to support Public Child Protection Wales. Links are included below.